Hey, Kaiser, what's up? What's up? It's 11 a.m. We got a quiz scheduled. What? I thought it was tomorrow. Yeah, well, this is going to be a little pop quiz. Just to prepare you for the element of surprise. I'm not really worried about Emily sneaking up on me. I mean, A, I'm doing the match in my own house, so should be fine. Yeah? Well, you know who's probably taking a pop quiz right now, tough guy? Mike Kalinowski. You think he's screwing around watching SpongeBob Square shorts? Um. He's training. And think about it. If you get past Emily the Rose, you get a piece of corruption. It, like, you know, the real goal is corruption. Mike Kalinowski. I like what I'm hearing. I know that Stacy Howard isn't still in corruption, but I still hold them personally responsible for my defeat in singles. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was some, like, holdover corruption nonsense. Are you ready to shock the world in this inner geekdom tournament? I am ready. I have never felt more prepared for literally anything in my life. Do you think I studied in school? I didn't study in school, but I studied for this. The new zipper. Because I actually care about this. And people are going to see how much I care when I burn through this bracket. What about the training drill with the chicken? Are you doing the training drill with the chicken? I'm already studying every day with the Smasher. I don't have time to be chasing chickens around my backyard. This isn't a Rocky movie, man. And also... Not all of us have farm animals just hanging out. What about this promo they're asking us to do? You got any ideas? I don't know. Like, I feel like the promos are, that's your job. Like, let me worry about winning this match, you know? We should definitely take a shot at Harloff for this promo. No, man. We don't take a shot at Christian. I don't need him hating me as much as he hates you. What do you think? Should we go after Harloff? I, you know. What about that weirdo in a wool mask? Dagnino. I'm gonna have to come after him. I can't be worried about you and Dagnino like the two drunk uncles at the wedding. I mean, there's all kinds of things I could call him. I know that you you gotta get your shots in. Vagrant. Scoundrel. Vagabond. Swindler. Charlatan. Beachcomber. Tramp. Drifter. I don't know. I'll think of something. Oh, and dude, try not to f swear so much, okay? You know how much Harloff hates that. Just remember one thing, Zip. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And the Finstock Exchange? They're just milk bones. Out! God, that guy is nuts. But he does know how to win. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown, the Inner Geekdom Tournament. It continues, and we get to see two of the best managers of all time go head to head as we have the Finstock Exchange going up against the dungeon. Two, I would say already, pros in the Inner Geekdom division with Emily the Rose Jacobson, who will be representing the Finstock Exchange against. Eric Zipper of the Dungeon. Mark Ellis, how are you? Oh, Christian, I am great. If you're asking me how I feel about these competitors, because Eric Zipper, Emily Rose Jacobson, so knowledgeable, such a breath of fresh air in the inner geekdom division. But then you look at their managers, and yet you say that they're two of the goats. But uh, my God, it's like dealing with your crazy uncle and the guy who sells narcotics to your crazy uncle. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's funny you say that because Eric Zipper, who came into this league as such a nice young gentleman, um, really, we know the story, how he turned his back on his partner and now manager uh, of swag, Winston Marshall. But it was the strange pair, pair up where he paired up with John Kaiser last year in the dungeon with his former partner, Paul Oyama. And it wasn't Oyama that stuck with the dungeon. It was Zipper. There's something with Zipper and Kaiser. Kaiser has really found a liking to Zipper. And I think the same Zipper said it. I can't remember what it was. It may have been an interview. He said, I, you never imagine years uh, and imagine a hundred years that I would be friends with someone like Kaiser, but Kaiser 
<laughs> is the guy that he really listens to. And it's strange because on the other opposite end of that coin, Emily Rose Jacobson, who might be one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life, with that scoundrel uh, Bobby Gucci, uh, you know, it, it's it, it, but it works. Yeah, look, the history of sport is littered with unlikely combinations of talent. But at the at the end of the day, Christian, maybe the managerial style of Gucci or of Kaiser doesn't necessarily fit even with their scumbag personality that you and I know. Maybe they did find something in being able to coach and mentor that we're just not seeing because you and I are looking at this from one perspective. But maybe Jacobson and Zipper are seeing something else that's apparent. Well, I mean, it has to be because you look at, I mean, as much as we want to take shots and it's fun to take shots at these two imbeciles, the, the best the best part about it is that they're great managers. I mean, Kaiser, yeah. is, in his rookie season as a manager, managed uh, two players to championships. Paul Oyama won the singles championship and Kevin Smets is the reigning inner geekdom champion. Bobby Gucci is a three-time winner of Manager of the Year, and he happens to have both the teams and singles champions in his faction. The Finstock Exchange they are the 1926 Yankees. There's no doubt about it. And so we have to see how it stacks up today, what it what it means in the race. Because as we look right now, here are the current standings. It is a tight race, Mark, as the Star Wars and the Inner Geekdom uh, tournaments have happened. And look at the changes. If you look right there from what it was just a few weeks ago to what it is today, it is a big move. So this is a big match for both uh, the Finstock Exchange and the Dungeon. That's right. Certainly Emily Rose Jacobson looking to get back because she was in a live match earlier this year and she ended up taking the loss to Alex Damon. Nobody really knew what Damon could bring to the table and certainly he did a lot. But Emily Rose, she put up a fight. So now going up against Eric Zipper, does that live experience help her at all? And I think that your point is valid about the managers and the managerial styles that we're going to see today because look bobby knight great coach earl weaver great manager i wouldn't necessarily want to hang out with them but right. did they get the job done did they get wins yes yes they did all right so enough of us talking about it you guys get to see how we got here today here we go what's up people gucci here i got an insider tip from an exile dungeon head that this is where the dungeon is. She's like, Gucci, you need to see what's going on here. It's, uh, it's something else. Go, Claudia. I appreciate it. Wait a minute. I think I got it. Here's the deal, Bobby Goofy. The dungeon owns the inner geekdom. I can't wait to unleash the new Eric Zipper, the Z1000. You know I was pretty down on Inner Geekdom earlier this year. I watched my match against Adam Holovic the other day and I didn't even recognize that guy. The player that people are gonna see in this tournament is focused, he's determined, he studies, and he cares intensely about winning this game. Eric Zipper wants to win this tournament and the road runs right through the fun stock exchange. Yeah! Atlanta was a tough match for me. That's the honest truth. And you know what? We live, we learn, we keep getting better, and we keep pushing on forward. If you guys think for one second that anybody from the dungeon will ever beat anybody from the Finstock Exchange, sadly mistaken. I'm not scared of Emily Jacobson. I watched her play in one of the lowest scoring inner geekdom matches of all time. Like, they have no idea what they're going up against. They don't understand that I've been training with Smets, with Parker, that I have been living and breathing inner geekdom. And I am excited to see the looks on their faces when they realize that this is not the Eric Zipper they're used to. This isn't Eric Zipper who wins. You know what? I've said this before and I'll keep saying it. The IG, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's not only who I am as a player, that's who I am as a person. So in this tournament, I'm really excited to play, really excited to see what I learn. And you know what? I'm really excited to win some matches. The Finstock Exchange, coming in hot and we're coming in greedy. I mean, everyone expected the the little uh, quips from both Kaiser and uh, Dagnino. 
But it's Emily Rose Jacobson. You see the journey that she wants, where she is, what she wants to do, but you see the fire in Zipper's eyes. He is friends with Smets. Smets is on his faction. Smets has been talking about this is a new Eric Zipper when it comes to inner geekdom. He had an I mean, you know, he had a, a decent road his first time around. I mean, he lost his one of his I think his first loss in inner geekdom came to legend Rachel Cushing. So he but there's something to him. You can see how much even in a singles loss to Stacey Howard. You could see how much the game means to him now. He's a different player that I see. Now how his knowledge has changed I don't know. We'll have to find out. I think we are about to find out. And both of them are competitors. And although they may be nice and, and bright on the surface, like Emily Rose Jacobson, you know there's a fire deep down there. And with Zipper, that fire has become more apparent. And maybe, Christian, that's why they are sticking with their managers in spite of things that you or I may think. They know that these managers are going to be the gateway to get them where they want to go in this division. Well, speaking of said managers, as we know, the rivalry continues between Kaiser and Dag Nino. Even though I think they're cut from the same cloth, they seem to. Maybe that's why they don't get along very well. But here they are, manager of the Finstock Exchange, Bobby Gucci, and the Dungeon. Do you deliver bl bl bloody no? Deliver the Bloody Mary with the Hickory Burger. You know it. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Well, hello, Kaiser. Thanks. Sorry, for just ordering lunch. No, I know. Thanks for. I appreciate that. So, guys, look, this is. We see ourselves here again. It's the dungeon versus the exchange. Kaiser, you, you kind of knew when you came into this league that Gucci was the guy to catch. He was the manager that everyone was talking about, and you made big waves last year. You had two champions, and then this year, you know, obviously with stuff that you're doing in Inner Geekdom, you drafted very strongly in the Inner Geekdom. How are you feeling with this match coming up? Well, you know the, how the dungeon handles its business with, with class and dedication to the game, okay? Whereas Gucci, he's got Bateman and Riley uh, stuffing envelopes for Capital One offers just to keep the lights on in that Finstock flop house, okay? We all know that I'm a classy operation. I got all the endorsement deals, Adidas, Hormel Chili, Rite Aid. All the big companies know who to go to, and that's the dungeon. Tom, on the other hand, looks like a crazy person came out of the woods after 38 years. You're like the Nell of the Schmodown. Tom? Give me one second. Oh, all right. Tom won. All right. And that Tom Dagnino, look, I did love him in season oh, wait, four. Wait, he's, that. he's bad. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait yep. a minute. Here we go. Not, yep. Wait That's yep. what I'm talking about. That's yep. not Tom Dagnino. That's something we haven't seen in quite a while. That's Finstock. Finstock. It sure is. Look, Are you, you're back. I am back. Look, you know, us here in the exchange, cultivate an aura of mystery, intrigue, and sexiness. And what better to simplify that than this mask? Because this does all those things. Intrigue, mystery, and sexiness. Look, life is too short to be not good at something that you're not immediately good at. You dig what I'm saying? Not really, but I, I, I kind of understand no, I don't understand it at all. I'm not, yeah, I'm not reading that at all. It's, I, I know there's a great rivalry between you two, and I can appreciate that. But let's talk about the competitors here today. Uh, Finstock, Gucci, whatever. I'm just glad you're wearing at least an article of clothing. I'm going to start with you, and then, okay. Kaiser, you can counter. What is it about your competitor today that is going to get them the win? Well, look, like I said before, um, the Finstock Exchange as a whole, we're stronger, smarter, and sexier. Every other faction is subservient, subpar, and stupid. Three S's across the board. Now, what I'm saying is, Emily, look, yeah, she she stumbled over in Atlanta. It was what it was, but she's coming to play. What we do in the Finstock Exchange is train every single day. There's a lot of people in, in other factions I'm hearing, they haven't even spoke to their competitors at all. There's competitors that didn't even know they were playing. Trust me, this is on every every person's in the exchange's calendar that this is when it is. These guys watch this stuff. They, they we, we are on text threads. We're the, that, the reason why we're the best is because we're a family. And that's that's facts. Uh, Kaiser? Tom, just please don't cook with that mask on because I don't need your head going up in flames before we even get our late night show off the ground. All right. That's just a little bit of advice. That's first of all, that's fair. Second of all. Listen, we've been watching Star Wars and Potter movies for the last five days over the Zoom, okay? This new technology. Now I can I can watch these matches live with my guys. I, I, now I get to see these movies for the first time, Star Wars and Potter and all, all this crap. That, the, that Smets has changed this, man. You, you understand what we've got right now? 
This is the new zipper. This is the Z1000. And you can thank Kevin Smets for coaching him to what's going to be a win today. All right. I know. I know. I know what this kid can do. You know what this kid can do. And, and, and look, he's well studied. He's running on an empty stomach. And he's going to take all that out on Emily the Rose tonight. Well, Ooh. there you go. So Kaiser okay. and Finstock never at a shortage of words there, Mark. Uh, gentlemen. Good luck to you both. This is a big match, obviously, for both the Dungeon and the Exchange. We'll see you in a little bit. That's it? We don't get to talk more? No. <laughs> Thank I'm you, not. Christian. I've never applauded your timing skills more with that button than right now. Thank you. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's, it always, it's amazing how much happiness it gives me to do that to those two in particular. Um, all right, Mark. Well, that being said, I'm ready to go. How about you? Yeah, I am ready. I'm going to take my uh, customary free inner geekdom shot of fish oil here. Here we go. Ah, all right, let's meet our competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of one win, two defeats, and one knockout. She is Emily the Rose. Jacobson, Emily Jacobson, she's here. Emily, how are you feeling here today on your, uh, this is your second match in the Inner Geek in the season. I'm feeling great. You know what? More of the merrier matches. That's how you keep getting better and better. Emily, if I can ask you just about that live event in Atlanta, it was just such a circus, really. I mean, there's a raucous, sold-out crowd. You're going up against Alex Damon. People are cheering, they're booing. It's everything imaginable kind of being thrown at you. So now that you're doing this from the comfort of your own home, is it more comfortable for you? And what experience from Atlanta can you take into this match? Definitely more comfortable and just, it's just me in my room, uh, which is very nice. But the thing from Atlanta that really I learned was a big uh, lesson for me was the wheel. That was my first really big challenge with the wheel. I landed not only on opponents, I landed not only, uh, Alex landed on opponent's choice, I landed on winner's choice. And for some reason, the power of choice really shook me. I did not trust my gut. And that is what I've taken away from that Atlanta match. And I've got a, a really solid plan for today. And so there's gonna be no hesitation from this Rose. Well, Emily, I also have to ask here too, because Zipper, you know, this is, if you had met Zipper two years ago, I think you guys would have gotten along very well. He seems to have a chip on his shoulder. He seems to be a guy that has taken this uh, this attitude of Kaiser and the dungeon. Uh, they, there's talk of him, uh, you know, doing a lot of studying. Have you paid attention to anything Zipper's doing and anything on this attitude of uh, the Z-Man? I'm not going to lie. I looked at his Twitter to see if he was talking about training or talking about studying really nothing on that end so for me it's kind of a toss-up you can talk 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 how much you've trained but that doesn't mean anything until the match fair enough well emily the rose jacobson for the finstock exchange she is ready emily will see you in just a moment here and her opponent representing the dungeon with a record of one win Two defeats and one knockout in the Inner Geekdom division. He is Eric Zeman Zipper. There he is. Hey guys. What's up, Zeman? How are you doing? I am doing all right. I feel prepared. I feel ready. Let's do this. Eric, I got to ask you, man, this is a new zipper. Either talk about how you're going to be, uh, you know, you've been training, Smets has been helping you. Is this, uh, you, you've talked about it in the past, and Inner Geekdom was a little rough in the past for you, and maybe, you know, maybe you weren't as, as trained. Do you feel better now going into this match? I do. I feel much more well-rounded now because I've been training with Smets. I've been training with Parker. I've been training with people who know what they are talking about when it comes to inner geekdom. And it used to be a case where my strengths were my strengths and my weaknesses are my weaknesses. But I've been whittling down those weaknesses one by one, and I am all strength. You know, Eric, when you think about the uh, shirt that you're wearing, I think about how Captain America's mantra, he just reminds himself, I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. So you, this morning, as you're making your bed, which thank you for doing that, by the way, and you're repeating yeah. something to yourself over and over again to get you hyped up for this match, what is the zipper mantra headed into today? I actually was listening to a song right before this called We Can't Be Beat. 
by the Walkman, and that's the mantra. We can't be beat. I can't be beat right now. All right, so Eric Zipper, the Z-Man, he is ready to go. We're going to bring oh, Emily back. Sorry, yes, Eric. one last thing, because when you were talking to Emily, you said if you two met each other two years ago, you probably would have gotten along. The funny thing is, I actually did meet Emily about two years before I did the Schmodown, and then when we ran into each other at the Schmodown, she did not remember me. Oh, so wow. I am still harboring Grudge. some <laughs> grudges over that, so it'll feel good to, uh, to you know, work that out emily do you have any response to that um it was a crazy time for me i was working for mountain dew there was a lot of dew to be had so i apologize <laughs> well there you go all right mark so our competitors are here grudges have been made and we see the beginning of the match round number one that's right so we got mountain dew right aid adidas Hormel Chili, and of course, Norwegian Fish Oil. Great sponsors of the program. <laughs> In round number one, it's Inner Geekdom, kids. So that means you're going to get 10 questions from 10 different corners of Inner Geekdom know-how. You'll have a Potter question, maybe a Middle Earth question, a Star Wars or a Star Trek question. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, please take 15 seconds, no more, to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have on whatever tablet you provided for yourself. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use the JTE rule because you got three of them. You only have one challenge, and that challenge can be issued by your manager at any point throughout the three-round contest. Christian, still got a little bit of a fishy aftertaste, but I'm good to go. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I have to start with Emily. Are you ready? I'm ready. Zip, are you ready? Let's do this. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, here we go. Question number one, round number one in the category of the MCU. In Iron Man 2's post credit scene, what does Coulson find in the desert of New Mexico? You ever find anything in a in a New Mexico desert, Christian? Diarrhea. No. It's the first question. Oh, well, you asked me to be honest. And five, I I <laughs> four, three. Why? Two, one. Pets down, please. Okay. Uh, let us start with Emily. Uh, Thor's hammer. Hammer is correct. Zip. It's called Mjolnir. That that counts. Yes. Okay. <laughs> one, <laughs> one one. All right, Mark. So at the end there, one one. Next question. All right, your next category is in the world of the galaxy far, far away. Star Wars, which, hey, you can probably see some of our live Star Wars matches. The question, in A New Hope, according to C-3PO, what did R2-D2 claim had short-circuited his recording system? Christian, you ever have your intestines short-circuit? In New Mexico. You were setting and me up, weren't you? You can't teach this, kids. Oh. And five. Yes, and. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and zipper. Sand? That is incorrect. Emily? His reductor bolt? Mm, the, the restraining bolt. Restraining bolt. Oh, That's what it was. So. It wasn't hard. Well, all right, just missed there. Looking <sighs> for uh, the almost had the opportunity to steal a point. Third question in the realm of Middle Earth. Who? plays King Theoden in the Lord of the Rings films. Christian, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I'm sick of hearing this guy's name without calling him Theo. Well, then that's why you would be run out of that place. <laughs> I got my little sign. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Emily. I know this is incorrect. Josh Brolin. Ugh. Not correct. Zip. Bernard Hill. Bernard Hill is correct. As Rip finds himself up 2-1 here as we get to our fourth question mark. And boys, it a doozy. Your next question is in the world of DC movies. And your question, which famous athlete plays John Henry Irons, also known by his alter ego, Steel, in 1997's Steel? It's a good query here, Christian. Yeah. 
Sure is. Have you seen this movie? Uh, no. Um, it's not good. Five. It's not good. JTE? Four. Oh, yep. Yeah, first one, Mark. All right. Repeating the question in the world of DC movies, which famous athlete plays John Henry Irons, also known by his alter ego, Steel, in 1997's Steel? You were excited to ask this question. I was, and I remember this movie coming out and getting excited for it, and I don't know that I ever actually saw it. So oh. I can't comment to its quality. Five, four, You're fine. You're fine. Three, two, <laughs> one, pens down, and zip. Shaquille O'Neal. Yes. And Emily? Terry Crews. Incorrect. All right. So we now have three to one, three to one, as Zipper has the lead over Emily. All right. Next question, guys. Here we go. Marvel films. Which actor plays Bruce Banner's father, Dr. Dave Banner, in 2003's Hulk? So were they both doctors then? I guess. Like a father, so it was like a family business. I didn't, I didn't really go the way of my pappy in that regard. No, well, you tried for a second, didn't you? Five, four, <laughs> one semester, three, two. It still counts. One pens down, please. And Emily, I just know that Eric Bana is the Hulk. That's incorrect, Zip. <laughs> yeah, Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte is correct. As Zipper starts to jump ahead here, four one. Our next question here, Mark. Oh, goddamn sun turning green all the time. <laughs> I'm going to next one. Your next category is in the wizarding world. And that question is, what is the name of the charms professor who teaches first year students to spell Wingardium Leviosa? Not to spell, the spell. You can understand. <laughs> Look, they have to teach English at Hogwarts, too. They <laughs> still have basic language requirements. You don't want a bunch of just dumb magicians running the book. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Zip. Flitwick. Flitwick is correct. Emily. Professor Phileas Flitwick. Yes. Okay. So, five, two. Emily stays three points behind uh, Zipper there, but Zipper has been on fire the last few questions here, Mark. That's right, Christian. Uh, next question. The seventh question. Star Trek Beyond was released in what year? How many of these Trek movies are there? Like 38? Oh, I don't know. You know what? We can ask that in one of the matches and find out. I'm going to say 14. Five, There's four, 13. You were close. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Emily. 2016. Yes. Zip? 2016. Correct. Zipper hits it. Zipper hits that one. 6-3. Six, 6-3. Three. Six, three. Playing a little Bateman there. I like it. All right. Moving on to your next category. This is the DCEU. More recent crop of DC films. Your question. Will Smith's Suicide Squad character Floyd Lawton is also known by what name? Movie. Could have a director's cut of this movie coming out, Christian. Could be. We'll see. I'd watch it. And five, four, three, two, one, and zip. Dead shot. Yes, Emily. Kill shot. Oh, yes. shoot. shoot. All right. Shoot, seven, shoot. three, seven, three. So Zipper finds himself with a big four point lead here as we get to our next question. Number nine heroes and villains. Heroes and villains. What famous character said, it's not the years, honey, it's the mileage? Oh, I know the answer. The answer is uh, Christian Harwell. That's it's true. Uh, this morning while making an omelet. You're really big on making the eggs for breakfast, huh? Yeah, I have to. Every morning? A lot of it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down. And Emily. James T. Kirk. It's incorrect. Zip. Han Solo? Close. Indiana Jones. Oh, I was going to put Indiana Jones. <laughs> Indiana Jones. 7-3. Seven, 7-3. Three, seven, three. So our next, uh, our next question here, Mark, is the last question in round number one. That is correct, Christian. No perfect rounds here today, but we do have one more query for you. It's worth a point, and it's in the category of mixed bag. So let's jump on in that sack and see what we pull out. Oh, it's a video game kind of movie. In Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, 
What type of police take away Todd Ingram's superhuman powers? I really enjoyed this movie. I've not revisited it enough. I haven't either, and I loved it. It's yeah. so good. It's, yeah. it's so good. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, zip. Freeze, vegan police. Vegan police is correct. Emily? Is it the vegan police? It is. Eight to four. So Emily gets that one, and we she's going to tell four down here, Mark, going into round number two. We're going to bring the managers in here now, too, uh, as we get to the second round. All right, Mark, how does round number two go? Round number two is the wheel round. The wheel is electronic, but don't worry. It works just as well with less oil than our actual wheel. In round number two, each competitor is going to spin that wheel once they settle on a category. They're going to hear five, yes, five questions in said genre. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. And we ask the competitors while you're on camera for the duration of round number two, Please keep your hands up so we can see that you're not doing any fiddling on that there keyboard. Christian, Emily Rose Jacobson talked about the wheel in our pre-show, and now it all is going to come down to that for her chances to get to round number three. But Eric Zipper is going to be the guy who first gets to decide if he wants to spin the wheel or defer to the Rose. That's right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drop both uh, Tom and Emily out just for a second here. Kaiser, you have 60 seconds to confer with Zipper uh, on anything you want to say to him, plus figure out if he wants to go first or second, starting now. Zip, you're feeling feeling like you're on a roll here. I like it, I see you in the zone. Maybe you wanna keep that momentum going and go first, but you tell me what you're thinking. Uh, I like going into round two, knowing the lay of the land, so I think we should defer. Okay, well then I defer to you, kind sir. Is that, a, is that official there, Zip? Yeah. Okay, all right, What's so we're gonna drop, drop, you, we'll drop you guys out here. Um, thank you guys for that. And now we bring back Emily and Gooch. Gooch, you have 60 seconds here to talk to your competitor before yep. she gets the first spin of the wheel. Mm -hmm. right now. All right, Em. We got some catching up to do. Yep. Stay calm. Same thing. Atlanta, calm. Got it. Take your time with the answers. Let's spin the wheel and we'll see what we get. All right. So let's, uh, let's get that wheel up there, please. Thank you so much. All right. So with that, here is the wheel spin. Spin away. There it goes. Same thing too. It's uh, a very nice wheel. Mm -hmm. So much. All right. Who said it? Now you again. You have sixty seconds. Mm, uh, talk to it. Emily, I think we know what we should do here. I think we should spin again. Yep. Yeah. I'd okay. like to spin again. All right. Emily's going to spin again. Uh, here we go. All right. Make it here. So. Here we go. Whatever it lands on, we're That's taking a tough category. We're not. We're not. We're not there with that. Oh, oh look at this, this. Christian! What a good good we need it. All right, so Emily, spinner's choice on the wheel here. You have again. You have sixty seconds to uh, decide what you want to pick and talk through it. Starting now. All right, we're in the same predicament we were in Atlanta, and we're not going to make the same mistake. Nope. <laughs> you know exactly where to go. Yep. All right. All right, Emily. I'd like to take the MCU. The MCU it is. All right, thank you, Gooch. We're going to throw you out here, too, and we're going to bring back Zipper. Zipper and Emily, please, if we can have your hands where we can see them during this round. Thank you so very much. All right, Emily, you chose Spinner's Choice, and you got into the MCU for your wheel round. All right, here we go. Emily, five questions in the realm of MCU. In Iron Man, Tony Stark received an award at the beginning of the film, but he was not there to accept it. What award was it? Multiple choice. Is it A, the Apogee Award, B, the Pulitzer Prize, C, the SciTech Award, or D, the DFE Award? The SciTech Award. It's incorrect. Zipper, you have the choices are, is it A, Apogee Award, B, Pulitzer Prize, C, SciTech Award, D, DFE Award? A, the Apogee Award. That is correct. All right. Um, let that is one. That is a one point steal. Here's your next one, Emily. What are the last words of the assassin who was sent to kill Stanley Tucci's Doctor Ernstein in 2011's Captain America: 
first Avenger. Multiple choice. A, Hail Hydra. B, Forgotten Country. C, Sic Semper Tyrannus. D, For the Fatherland. Hail Hydra. For one point, that's correct. All right, that's a big, big get. You don't want to give away another steal to zipper, Christian. All right, next question here. When Scott is arrested in Ant-Man, Hank comes to speak to Scott at the police station, pretending to be his what? Multiple choice. A, parole officer. B, lawyer. C, father. D, therapist. Father. Incorrect. Zipper for the steal here is A, parole officer, B, lawyer, C, father, D, therapist. Five, four. His lawyer. For one point, that's correct. Wow. All right. You steal for Zipper. And here's our next. It's 10-5 right now. This is your fourth question here, Emily. Thor mistakenly calls Rocket what type of animal in Infinity War? A rabbit. That's correct for two points. One of the funniest lines in all of the MCU. Uh, and your last question here, Emily. In Spider-Man Far From Home, what is the password to happy cell phone? Five. Multiple choice. Is it A, happy, B, Tony, C, cell phone, D, password? Password. That's correct for one point. So Emily fights back there. Mark, we see ourselves 10-8. Zipper did have two big steals there, one point apiece as he still holds the lead. Uh, 10 to 8 right now. 10-8 as we get to Zipper's spin. All right, Emily, we're going to drop you out here for a second. We're going to bring back Kaiser. Um, and Kaiser, you have 60 seconds to talk to your competitor right now. Go. If you need it. Well, Zip, you need to take a deep breath. Maybe Christian will give you two or three minutes to go meditate in the backyard and we can come back. <laughs> I think I'll be okay. You sure? I think I'm all right. Yeah. I feel pretty good. You know, I've been good. applying all that new Phil Jackson stuff since I've been watching this last dance. So I want to <laughs> make sure you're applying it. Sure, yeah, sports. Love sports. All right, well, I think that's enough of that. All right, so let's get, to the, <laughs> let's get to the wheel itself. And here it is. Spin away, please. Christian, we are in knockout range potentially here. Potentially, depending on what he gets. And that's not good. That's opponent's choice. So opponent choice. Me. Well, wait, we can, we can pass on that. Uh, nope. Thanks for playing the no, game. No, not on opponent's right, choice. So now we're going to bring in... For a second here, we're going to bring in Emily and Gucci. We're back to where we were in Atlanta. Same thing in Atlanta. Is, this is so like Twilight Zone right now. All right, <laughs> it, uh, it pretty much is. Em, what are you thinking here? What we talked about? Yep. All right. You know what it was. It starts with an M and uh, ends with an E, right? Mm-hmm. Middle okay. Earth? No, that's not Middle Earth. That doesn't have an E. What is it? Where's the M? That's well, middle, middle Earth. Ends with an H. Ends with an H. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about the word, just the word middle. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. We middle Earth. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's bring a zipper in here. Middle Earth it is. All right, zipper. You're going to Middle Earth. You're going to have uh, five questions in the realm of Middle Earth, Mark. All right. And if anybody wondered why they should teach spelling and grammar at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter... There was your example. Here we Five go. questions, two points a piece. Eric, you need multiple choice, just ask us. That'll reduce the point value of the question to one. Your first question in Middle Earth is in the Lord of the Rings. What is the name of the fortress where Saruman's tower is located? Are you asking for the name of the tower or the name of the place because... The name of the fortress where Saruman's tower is located. Isengard. That is correct for two points. That is correct. Two points for Zipper here, Mark. Next question, question number two. All righty. Next question, Middle Earth. 
In The Hobbit, one of the dwarves in Thorin's company is Gimli's father. What is that dwarf's name? Gloin. It, and what a name it is, Gloin. <laughs> For two more points. Two more points. We see ourselves now with 14-8 as Zipper gets a six-point lead here. Next question. All right. Your third question of five in Middle-Earth, Eric. Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin stay at which watchtower shortly before Aragorn saves them from the Nazgul? Weathertop. Yes, wow. it is. Wow, that is impressive. That is impressive. It looks like somebody's been studying Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, and this was a category he did not choose, Christian. No, you did not. Here we go. Next one. All right. This is for a 10-point lead, if you get it right off the bat. In Thorne's dying speech, he says, if people valued blank more than gold, the world would be a merrier place. What is that blank word? Let's go multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, love, B, friends, C, home, or D, honor? Friends. That is incorrect for a one point steal. Emily, I'm going to give you your options again. Is it A, love, B, friends, C, home, or D, honor? Home. That's a huge steal, Christian. The chances of a knockout have been eliminated. Yeah, that was a big one. Well, for a knockout, for sure, it was eliminated this round. She'll, be, she'll make it to the third round regardless. All right, final question here in the round for Zipper. All right, back to you, Eric. Your question in Middle Earth. In Return of the King, the elves reforged the sword that cut the ring from Sauron's hand. What was the name of the reforged sword? Anduil. And you are correct for two points. So, Christian, look, Emily did stave off the knockout, but going into round number three, Eric Zipper, quite a sizable advantage here. Yeah, he still put himself and the dungeon in a great position here because as we, as you may or may not know, three points during the regular Inner Geekdom matches, one point for a knockout. So if Emily Rose cannot get out of the third round before Eric answers some questions, the dungeon sees himself with four big points here. So Mark, how does round number three go? It's a nine point game as we head into round number three. This is the round that will determine the match lest we go to sudden death overtime. In round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. We need numbers three in total from each of you that range from one to 15. Each of those numbers corresponds to a different corner of inner geekdom know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. And your last one is worth five big points. So, Eric, like I said, you currently have a nine-point lead over Emily. So you are going to give us your three preferred numbers first. From one to 15, what feels lucky? 12, 2, and 3. 12, 2, and 3 for Zipper and Emily. 6, 14, and 10. 6, 14, and 10. We noted. Emily Rose. All right, Emily. So in order to avoid the TKO, you need to hit all three of your questions. You cannot miss. So here is your first question. You chose category number six. It's Middle Earth. Right back to Middle Earth. All right. Saruman crafts an army of 10,000 to storm Helm's Deep. This advanced breed of orcs goes by what name? Urukai. Urukai is correct for two points. All right, Emily. Sticking with you here as you get to category 14. Category 14, we're at Star Wars. We are at Star Wars. All right, Emily. Who is the first character willing to trust Lando again after his betrayal of Han Solo? And five, four. Leia. And your winner, my (laughs) way. Nicole, Eric Zeman Zipper. Oh, man. The answer was C3PO. C3PO. Emily, I'm going to put you in the waiting room here just for a second. 
Kaiser, Zippo, massive victory here. Not only is it a win for the dungeon, a must needed win, it's a big four points. This is a big four points for the dungeon. Kaiser, you said Zippo came to play and you aren't lying. How are you feeling? I mean, if you just look at Zipper, his skin is a lot nicer. He's, he's lost some weight. He, he literally looks like a Terminator, and he proves it with a TKO. This is a good time to be in the dungeon. Smets is the unified champion of the world after beating the farmer, the old cowboy, and, and the Jawa. And now we got we got Zip advancing in this IG tourney. I really hope we get a piece of that Dicky Do Kalinowski. I want Kalinowski to win because there's nothing I like more than beating corruption. So Shannon, get on your horse because this kid is the real deal and he came to play. Well, yeah, you know, it is ironic that I got a KO because KO is next. <laughs> well, that's well, we don't know that yet because he is playing. He is playing right now against Greg Alba, who had an amazing performance in the in the play in match. You're so, right. Alba will probably beat him. Greg Alba will play Kalinowski, but Mike is obviously the favorite in that match. Zip, we know your history with Kalinowski. We know what he did as far as, the, you know, you were promised certain things in corruption. He was behind it the whole time. He's he's mocked you in the past. How satisfying would it be to defeat Mike Kalinowski in this tournament? There are honestly no words for how good it would feel to knock him out of this. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, if I knock him out of this tournament, I think he should be officially barred from ever calling me Zippity Doodah ever again. Like, I guarantee you, that's probably all he's going to call you leading up to. The <laughs> uh, sure. Big, big word coming from Zippity Dippy Doo over there. Okay, he's got no. That kid's got no no latitude to run on anybody. Eric, I do have a question. I'd like to hear the answer to now, and that is: Look, they stuck you, and they seem pretty confident giving you Middle Earth. That you didn't know what you were talking about there. Did you take offense to that? How quickly they were like, "Oh, we can give this guy Middle Earth." Uh, a little, but I was also glad because uh, I love the Lord of the Rings. Um, it's never been one of my biggest strengths in the inner geekdom, uh, but I also do not consider it one of my largest weaknesses. Uh, I have had some bad luck with it before. I think that she was basing it off of uh, my match with Adam, where I missed some Middle Earth questions. Um, but to the extent that that was a weakness, I have shored up that weakness. Uh, I feel very good about that category right now. Well, he's, got the, he's got the best training partner in the world, so what can you expect? Well, this kid right. is lean and mean. It was big. It was a big win, but Zipper, you know, you had a crushing defeat earlier this year in one of the easily the one of the matches of the <clears throat> that I can I, I guarantee will be nominated for your match against Stacey Howard in the singles division. It was a crushing defeat. Some people would have taken that and said, I don't know if I can do this again. That was just too much emotionally. You seem to do the opposite. You seem to uh, to be really working with what did, what did that match do for you uh, in preparation for this one? Well, the defeat was one thing, but when I take a step back and look at my performance in that match objectively, I played incredibly well. So I came out of that match feeling bad about the defeat, but I lost because of weird Stacey Howard magic where she just like knew answers that she didn't know. Like I didn't lose because I played poorly. Uh, so I think I was able to take a little bit of that feeling of like, okay, I can't let this happen again, while also being like, oh, if I keep playing like this, it takes a magic fluke to knock me out. So no more flukes. Well, I mean, look, this was something like they said, you guys have been working really hard. It showed. Um, and this was the big thing was that everyone was talking about Parker in this tournament and Kaiser to his credit has been saying, yeah, everybody's talking about Parker and Parker's going to do what, what he's set out to do, but watch out for zipper. This kid's training, he's hungry and he's mean. And, and Kaiser looks like you were right this time around. Hey, I said, look, I said it, he's going to take, I said he was going to take out <clears throat> all that hanger out on Emily, the Rose. And he did. I just want to put it out. Listen real quick. If, if you can bring Emily in. Blink twice if that lunatic Dagnino is holding you against your own will. I'll send Parker to break you out of there. Well, fair enough. All right. Well, Kaiser, Zipper, congratulations. Now you sit you. back and you wait to see. I mean, to be fair here, we have been talking as if it is a foregone conclusion that Mike's going to win. Should Greg Alba win, how would you feel about going up against Greg in the second round there, Zip? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Let's do it. I can, if I'm, I'm not scared of Mike and I'm not scared of Greg. So anybody that I'm facing next after this today, I feel good. I feel confident. I feel comfortable. Let's do this. All right. Once again, guys, thank you so much. Kaiser, 
Zipper, congratulations. Good to be in the dungeon, baby. Big, but then again, win. it's always good to be in the dungeon. Big win for the dungeon. Big four points here for you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring back in Emily Rose Jacobson and Finstock. Emily, tough one here today. Zipper said he was coming to play. He said that he did. He got. You ran into the same situation you did in Atlanta. Opponent's choice, spinner's choice. It just, uh, what was behind the decision for uh, Middle Earth? Well, uh, just like Zipper said, I looked at his previous matches, saw what his weaknesses were, and just put my bets on that. We put our bets on Middle Earth. Uh, it was nice to grab that steal in that category. But you know what? He talked a big game about being trained, and he came in here, and he showed that. Tom, I know this is a, this is a tough one for you. This is something that, you know, you 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 know you haven't had to handle too much this season, and it's a yeah. – uh, it's a loss and the Finstock exchange is it's a you know, it's it's against the ropes at the moment. How are you feeling after this match? I mean, look, I don't really necessarily believe in deja vu, but uh yeah, apparently it happens. Uh you know, we like she said, I mean, we thought that that was uh, you know, his weakness and clearly uh he was studying and did really well. Um, you know, we got spinners, luckily, and you know, that we were comfortable with MCU. I don't think we wouldn't went anywhere else. Um, and you know, the questions were hard and, you know, when you're playing in, uh, you know, this level of competition, uh, you know, one miss, two misses here is going to cost you the game. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, we had a game plan and it blew up in our face. Uh, that, that is not the way we like to operate around here. Um, you know, we'll fix it. I mean, there's always, you know, we can come back. I mean, Emily is a, a consummate professional. Uh, everybody in the exchange has her back. Um, this unfortunately didn't work out. Um, so that's just the way it's got to go. I mean, look, if anybody thought that the Finstock Exchange was going to run away with this league from the get-go, yeah, of course, we got big names on paper. It is what it is. But there's a lot of really, really solid competitors in this league and it's showing now. I mean, all of our big dogs have been off for a while because of this, you know, the pandemic. And, uh, you know, you got, you got these tournaments going on right now where a lot of people are going to make, uh, you know, make up a lot of headroom here. And, uh, we, we, you know, who knows where we're going to be looking. We might be looking up. We might be looking down in the standings. We don't know yet. Emily, I, I hate to be the one that kind of stirs this gossip pot, but I do have to ask, you know, Kaiser brings up that maybe you're not having the best time in the Finstock Exchange. So I have to ask, after a loss like this, does it make you reconsider your affiliation? Would you prefer to be managed by someone who wears a shirt? Absolutely not. I like, like, uh, like Gucci said, the Finstock Exchange is a family. This group has each other's backs. I've not. I've been training with the Barbarian. I've been training with other folks, going back and forth, making sheets, working hard. It's been tough battling uh, the forces that be right now in this current situation we're all in, and trying to make time for studying and balancing mental health. I did my best. You know what? Two KOs. It really stings. I'm not gonna lie. Really, really stings. But. I have just actors on my list to memorize. I'm going to come back once all this is over and we're back in the studio. You're going to see some new some new blooms on this rose. I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in hot. I'm going to come in fast and I'm going to take that belt. All right. So last question that I do have here for you, uh, Gooch, before we take off. Um, look, it's always not. Obviously, it's not fun to lose. Is Does it sting a little bit more because it was to Kaiser? Yeah, of course it does. I mean, I've owned him in the past. Um, but look, I mean, the way he drafted was heavy IG. And, and we knew that. I mean, he's putting all his eggs in a couple of baskets here, you know. And that's, you know, he's got Parker. He's got Smets, obviously, the, the two best I've seen in a really long time. Um, and Zipper really did really, really well here today. We were not expecting that. Um, and that's that's probably on me and, and, the way, and a couple of different things we did. Not taking, uh, not taking him. Uh, I, guess, I guess to say we took him for granted at this point. Um, not to say we were going to run over him or anything like that. But getting spinner's choice and opponent choice. Uh, you know, if you told me that and I wasn't watching the match, I'd be, I would have thought she ran away with it. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Like I said, once again, there's a lot of factions here that are really, really good, uh, and their their strong points. Uh, the dungeon strong point is obviously IG and. Uh, if he can sit back and stay and stay like high up in the standings with IG and get this thing going, yeah, the dungeon's going to be a force to be reckoned with, along with swag, along with the den. Um, I, I would say and maybe corruption as well. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to people to make up some points, uh, especially in these tournaments, and I think they're going to do that. So, 
every loss for the Finstock Exchange in these tournament tournaments going forward, if we do lose any, uh, will be really, really uh, not good for our team. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, thank you very much again, Emily. Always a pleasure to see you. Tom is right. Constant professional every single time we see you. Thank you so much for joining us here today, both you and Tom. Sorry for the loss, but I'm sure the Finstock Exchange will be back sooner than later. Appreciate it. All right. So both Tom and Emily Rose there, I think classy in defeat. Yeah, Christian. I mean, look, I, I think a lot of people might be crushed by a loss like this just because you, you trained, you studied, you worked with your teammates, with your faction members. But just hearing the optimism in Emily Rose Jacobson's voice, it makes me think, yeah, that, that she still is on her path. And this is not going to make her deviate from that. You're making your spreadsheets. You have your study. You have your knowledge. And you just continue to do that. But when we look at the landscape of this tournament, Eric Zipper came here to prove a point, and I think he did so with an exclamation. He said, look, I am to be taken seriously in this league. Maybe I'm not the biggest inner geekdom name yet. No, you know what I think he's doing for himself also right now? Even though he had that loss to Stacey Howard, I think he's making a run for most improved player. Um, there's no doubt about it. You see the, what he's done so far. When he came into the league world's finest, he was the stronger player on that team. But even to his own admission, I think he'd tell you, I kind of went off on my own uh, my own knowledge, and I, I did what I did, and I had some fun. He started hanging out with guys like Smets and Parker and Kaiser and realizing that he wants to – you can tell how competitive he is and how he wants to – be good and you think he studied now if it is Kalinowski that he is going to get you're going to see a very different because he wants to smash as we can steal from something else he wants to smash uh, Kalinowski and get him out of there because that would cement his legacy in this division yeah, and ironically, I think that the one person that Emily Rose Jacobson could look at and say, oh, I, I can do that is Eric Zipper, because Eric Zipper had a tough loss, as we right. mentioned earlier this season, it, and he it. bounced back marvelously. This yeah. this league, Christian, has is littered with stories as far back as when you and I started it, that you have people, it's not how you handle winning, it's how you handle losing and look at somebody like john roca who who had a tough loss and he managed to bounce back from it when you lose in this type of format you either retire you go to the announcer booth or you pick up yourself by your bootstraps and you say i'm going to work harder and i think you're going to see that from emily and zipper well he's already on his recovery path that's absolutely right and here are the standings as they go today mark the dungeon Jumping up uh, four big points there, and that's where they are. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And the way that you watch this match, all you got to do is tune into YouTube. That's right, youtube.com slash the schmodown. The tournament is airing every Thursday and Friday. But if you want to watch the Thursday match, like a lot of you guys just did for this one, you might have seen this on Monday or Tuesday. The way you do that, you become a patron. And how you do that, you go to patreon.com slash schmodown and join today, and you can get these matches just a little earlier. That's right. It's been so nice having this virtual setup, Christian. And look, when this pandemic started, we, we didn't know when we were going to be able to do Schmodowns again. But this setup that we have here, I applaud you. I applaud our entire tech team. It's been great having this just as an outlet to express ourselves and get some of that creativity and entertain the masses. But it's also been great because the matches have been spectacular thus far. So I look forward to a lot more where that came from. And one of those matches, big one on Friday. That's right. Chance Ellison, Paul Oyama, they have done it before in the singles. Will they do it now in the inner geekdom division? Corruption versus swag. The factions continue to war. Make sure you check it out this Friday, the 26th. Thank you guys for Mark Ellis. I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.